Okay, so let's start with number okay. one. Page 13 here. All right, so uh, first thing we can check is, uh, is this expandable? And we see that these is not a rational function where we can split up and uh, deal with using power rule. So we see the parentheses, we see the squared, so that should help us identify this as a uh, potential u substitution problem. So we can always look inside the parentheses as a potential a place to look for potential U value. The derivative of natural log is U prime over U, so one over X. Cross multiply. Make our substitutions. So we need the X's to go away, which they do. Pull the one, the five out in front as a one fifth. Now we have a nice clean problem for us to apply an appropriate rule, which is power rule. Okay. And now let's bring um, the variable X back. You can place that 15 in the denominator. You can push it out in front. Variation is fine. All right, so rational function here. Um, we too many terms in the denominator. There's no way we can split this up and um, into smaller problems. This is all kind of stuck. Uh, we look at the degree here. It looks like uh, the denominator 
It's hard denominator being the U value could be a good fit because the degree is one higher than the one above it. So we know that X to the fourth becomes X cubed. X cubed becomes X squared. X squared becomes X to the first power. That should be a nice fit. So let's try that. U D X. All right, so we see the X cube, the X squared, the X, that's good. But we got to be careful here. We can't just say, oh, the 7, 4, I can just take that away, 21 and 12, right? We have to really get these two to look exactly like, well, at least some version of it. And that's going to require us to at least do some factoring, right? If we take a GCF out, we want to find something that will that will match perfectly. And we can't, yeah, we can't cancel across addition um, without doing a little bit more work, right? So here, um, What's a what's a GCF that I can take out here? Seven, so I can take out a seven. Now I could also make an argument to take out seven x, but I see the the variables already lined up pretty well. It's just the coefficients that needs a little bit more rearranging here. And then denominator here, I can take out a what? Got four. So now this is a much better fit than before, right? We don't want to cancel across addition and subtraction. We really want to get something to more, look more like this before we take anything else. So now feels a lot cleaner, right? These two can go away. We've already taken care of. So what can I push out in front? Seven over four, and that leaves us with a, with a nice recognizable rule that we can apply one over u du. And then replace the u back in terms of x. All right, questions with two. Here's number three. Number three, also a rational uh, function here. Um, 
I always want to consider okay, this power rule work because that's always my first option. Now it would be good if there's only one term below, right? Then we can split up into individual fractions and separate them and treat them as individual terms. But that X plus two um, kind of forces us to look other places, right? It's not easy enough for us to just rely on power rule or expansion. So our next option is uh, looking to see what could be a better fit. Is this a use substitution? Is this uh, having to rewrite it using synthetic division? What do you guys think? Synthetic, right? That degree is higher than the denominator and with multiple terms. Uh, so it's either use substitution or um, or synthetic division. If the degree is the same or the numerator is higher, we have to look to rewrite it. If the denominator degree is higher, then we typically uh, like to target the denominator being the new value. Okay, so again, synthetic division is an algebraic process. It will not solve the problem for you. Um, the whole point of it is to produce a different version of this problem, right? We divide this out, create a different version of the problem um, that should allow us to um, match with rules that we have available. So we set the denominator equal to zero. Solve for x, negative two. So we know negative two is going to be what is outside our half box. Okay, so let's list out our leading coefficients here. What's in front of uh, x to the fourth? One, followed by three, followed by negative one, and then what? Mm, so we have a zero. Good. So degree, this is degree four, degree three, degree two, and we need a degree one, which is zero, negative five. Now, if there were, if this, if it was just stopping at x squared, then we can just stop at negative one and not have to worry. Okay. It's only if a degree is skipped over, we have to worry about uh, placing a zero. Um, don't have to worry about placing a zero if, if, if it, if it just ends at a certain spot. It's not wrong. I mean, if you wanted to include zero after those, um, it would be fine. But um, we just have to be, be really diligent with zeros if a degree is skipped over. All right. Bring down the one first. And multiply. Synthetic division. Like right, so, okay, so we took the negative two out. We we bring the one down. Okay. Always, always. Yeah, always bring the first number down below the line, okay? And then you multiply with the number outside of it. So one times negative two is negative two. You put that number in the next column, and then you add three minus two is one, so that one goes below the line. Yeah, negative two times one is negative two. Put that number in the second row. Add that third column, we get negative three. Okay, negative three times negative two is six. Okay, zero plus six is six. And six times negative two is negative 12. Add that together, we get negative 17. So we started with x, x to the fourth. We're dividing by x to the first power, so this degree is going to fall to what? x to the third. And once you have that set, then everything is just going to fall by one degree. So x cubed, x squared, x constant, and the last is what? Remainder. So the remainder you put over the divisor. Wait, why did that? Because the remainder tells us that we can't divide any further. Uh, everything else divides out pretty well, but every, but that last term doesn't divide any further. So we say, okay, I can't divide this any further. So that's my leftover. Negative 17 divided by X plus two. The last term, yeah. Uh, always go under what? Any questions with that? 
yeah, this we can also do this using long division, but um, when we're when we're um, dividing by a degree to the first power, that allows us to use synthetic division. Now, if there's any other degree higher than that, we're going kind to of rely on a long division. But on the quiz, you'll see one where you could solve either or you could rewrite using either long division or synthetic division, but synthetic is just a little bit faster. Yeah, they're going to be on the point on the quiz where we have to do long division. No. All right, so uh, we haven't solved the problem yet. We just created a different version of the problem, so we still have to take our antiderivative. So you see how all these terms are nicely separated. I can treat each like it's an individual problem where before we couldn't do it, right? But now everything is its own term. So first four terms is power rule, and the last term, we just do a little bit of use substitution. You do. You can do either, yeah. So at the end, I'll show um, long division for those of you who want to see it. Now the last term here, um, we have to go through use substitution, right? This is the X plus two. So if you can see that this is a natural law problem, you can go directly to the antiderivative, but if you want to see the steps here, So um, the antiderivative of this would require us to get all the way here, but if you can see that this is going to end up looking like this, you can jump directly to that without having to go through all those steps. I think some of the, the easier use substitution problems, you're able to kind of see it without having to go through all the additional steps. There's my antiderivative. All right, question with number three. Hey, okay, here's number four. Right, first things first, we ignore the bounds. We're going to treat this like a indefinite integral because we have to be able to solve this problem before the bounds can even uh, play a role. Right, too many terms in the denominator. We know we can't split up into individual terms. Uh, we know we have to go through use substitution. What could be our u value? That again? Sure. Yeah, yeah, we look inside the parentheses, right? It's always a good place to start looking. Um, doesn't always guarantee the location of a U value, but if you if you see a set of parentheses, we have to, we have to at least consider it. Just rewriting it, I like to push that dx out to the right here. So getting that U value ready for power rule. I'm going to clean this up. Um, get that negative exponent. Be a positive exponent. I want to bring a, the square root back because I know that 
this should match up nicely with that, but it's just easier to look at it when things are matching. Cross multiply. All right, make my substitutions. Pull the two out in front. Right, matches nicely with the rule that we have available, which is natural log. Make sure you bring back your original variable. Or the other option is you convert the bounds to be in terms of you, and then you can use those new bounds, which is what I did on the key, but I'll show this other way here. Upper bound first. Minus, then lower bound. This is root nine. Root nine is same thing as three. One plus three is four. Root four is two. One plus two is three. So this is fine. We have a plus C. Because it's a uh, definite integrals, right? Definite integrals, we don't have a plus C. Uh, they will just end up washing out. It's true, both of these will produce plus Cs, but one will be positive, one will be done negative, so they end up canceling each other out. Uh, let me just show you different variations of this. Um, you know, you definitely leave your answer like this. Oh, we definitely want to make sure we don't say natural log of four minus natural log of three is natural log of one, right? These are not like terms, but we can do this. Um, I just want to show you for um, multiple choice purposes on the AP exam. If this was the answer, they will probably try to clean this up a little bit more and say um, natural log of A minus natural log of B is same thing as natural log of A over B. So that's a potential option where these mean the same thing. And then something else that can be done is natural log, you can push that two up as an exponent and make it natural log of four thirds squared. So another option is Natural log of 16 over 9. Now you can talk to do any of that on the quiz, but just want to show you how these are all the same thing. It's just using um, log properties to condense it all the way to this point. All right, number five. All right, so cotangent and secant, hopefully um, we're able to recognize these as two of the newer um, trig rules, right? These are not part of the original six trig integrals. 
cotation and secant, they both are uh, the four new ones involve natural log. So let me write those rules to the side. And that 3x and 4x is going to force us to have to go through a little bit of use substitution. Okay. Right, so cotangent is cosine over sine, and that cosine over sine in the denominator helps me remember that it's natural log of sine. There's no letter C near the beginning, so I know I'm going to keep that as a positive. Secant UDU, secant involves secant and tangent. All right, so there are the rules I'm going to apply, uh, but I see that 3x and 4x is going to require us to uh, go through use substitution. I'm going to just um, separate these so I can, you don't have to do this, but this helps me see that these are two distinct problems with their own um, own process. So here, I'm going to let this be the U value. Make my substitutions. What comes out in front? Two over three. All right, so we can apply our cotangent rule, which is two thirds natural log sine of u. And then bring your original variable back, 3x. Okay, same thing here, secant, use of substitution, my u value is 4x. One fourth secant u, so now matches perfectly with the rule that I want to use here. I right, replace the u back in terms of x. Any questions here? Now, let me show you a, a nice pattern when it comes to u substitution involving um, linear terms like 3x or 4x or 5x or 6x. We could skip all the step if we recognize what's happening with that 3x, right? That 3x will produce a what? At the end. Right, so basically we so what that what's that connection then this three in the numerator will just end up in a denominator. Right? So this four will just end up in the denominator. So basically whatever you see in here, you can just flip it and then just pull it out in front. Now, if you don't want to 
had to go through that um, process in your head, you're more than welcome to show all these steps. But I just want to kind of show that technically, you know, if you recognize that cotangents rule is is this, and if you realize what that three is doing, you can jump directly from here to here. Um, but that's only if you're comfortable with that process, right? If you prefer to just go through the steps every time, um, you're more than welcome to do that. But typically for the easier U values, I see some students, you know, prefer to just jump to the end without having to show all these steps, especially if they can predict quickly what's going to happen with this with those U values. Now, if it's anything higher than uh, than an X, then I would go through the trouble of going through U substitution just to make sure I'm not missing anything. But um, that's a nice uh, quick connection to help save some steps if you're comfortable with that. All right, number six. You got cut off a little bit on your sheet here, but it should be seven to the two over X. All over X. All right, so we see the um, the exponential function sitting here, right? This a to the u, so that should hopefully kind of guide us towards our u value being the exponent. Now you may be looking at this thinking, how is this going to help me with this x squared? Well, this x is in the denominator, so um, you know the derivative is not going to be what you would normally expect. If those two x, then I'll be more worried that it's not going to take out this x squared, but that x in the denominator, once you bring it up and go through the power rule, an x squared should show up. All right, so once that x comes up to the top, I can just get it ready for power rule, find the derivative. Going to do some cleanup here before I go too far. Cross multiply. Solve for dx. Make my substitutions. X squared goes away. That's what we want. Make sure we don't just merge this and say it's negative seven halves, right? This is stuck inside the exponential function here. So that seven is not a coefficient. We can't just merge it with other things as easily. So the negative one half has to be on its own. Seven to the U is its own thing. Right, we have a rule for A to the U. It's an exponential function, right? A constant raised to a variable. So the original function basically reappears in our antiderivative, but there's just a little bit of coefficient um, conversion that has to happen. All right, so following the rule here, my a value is seven, so one over natural log of seven times a to the u. Let's see. I'm going to push this together. You can leave it separate if you like. I'm just going to put it together here. Replace the U back in terms of X. All right, uh, I'm going to redo number three. I think some students wanted to see number three, um, the synthetic division using long division.
Huh? Uh, the problem on the quiz, you can do it both, right? It wouldn't that's right, that's right. You can do it both ways. I'll I'll give you one that's linear in the denominator, so you have the choice. Hmm? If you want with long division, you put a placeholder. So we match terms here. X times what gives us X to the fourth? X cubed. Take the X cubed, distribute it through the parentheses. Draw your line, change your signs. Add zero out. Bring everything else down. Repeat the process. X times what gives us X cubed. X squared does. Take the X squared, distribute it through the X plus two. Draw your line, change your signs. First terms will always zero out. Combine like terms after that. Back to the beginning, x times what gives us negative 3x squared, or that, uh, so that's going to be negative 3x. Distributing the negative 3x through, negative 3x squared. Plus minus 6x. Draw your line, change your signs. This times what gives us 6x, which is 6. Multiply that through. 6x plus 12. Draw your line, change your signs. Negative 17 can't go any further, so we call that the remainder. So then we take our result and go through our integral process. Easy. Mm -hmm. If you pick the same thing, okay. So they have to fill out a schedule. So they do the work out here. How much do they have to fill in? 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 Yeah, we have to speak with the two pencil, right? Yes. Yeah, we just sent them to the other media center. Give me 30 of them. I'll bet you. Thank you.